By the mid-1980s, the Rocky sequels had become an accepted and expected part of popular culture. Stallone had been branching out into other films, from Rambo to Rhinestone, with mixed results. But a new Rocky sequel seemed like a sure thing. Only one problem. How could Stallone avoid retelling the same old story? Well, how are you going to make Rocky again? How are you going to equal that character? And you're all wound up and you're trying, how can I top the last one? How can I top the last one? He decided to set it against a current affairs backdrop, U.S.-Soviet tensions. Rocky IV would find the Italian stallion battling not just another boxer, but world politics, a superhero fighting on a global scale. Ford was a whole nother animal. That was bombastic is what that was. It happened with Joe Lewis when he fought Max Schmeling, but it was Nazis against, you know, the free world. Hmm. So I moved this situation and just made it Russia, Cold War. There's a sort of an interesting payoff to the really wonderful development of Apollo's character in Rocky One and Two. There is that moment in every athlete's life where you can't quite do what you used to do. You're just not as fast as you used to be. You're slowing down, dude. Again, it's a philosophical message or a pretty blatant message that don't keep beating your head against the wall and trying to compete against something that's more physical, more powerful, and more deadly than you are. Rocky tried to tell you, leave that Russian alone. This dude is a bad man. That bad man is a machine-tooled villain, Ivan Drago, the ultimate product of Soviet technology. To play him, Stallone would find a diamond in the rough, a Swedish student, model, and karate champion turned actor, Dolph Lundgren. I came to America to study chemical engineering at MIT in Boston. I got into acting, and you know, one of the first castings I went to was for some boxing movie. I came up to a table, and there's a girl sitting there with a bunch of papers, and it turned out to be Sasha Stallone, who was Sly's wife at the time. I didn't know that, but she just didn't even look up. She just said, how tall are you? 6'4", she's like, too tall, next. And I was like, wait a second. Six months later, when I was in Europe, somebody called me on the phone, and it was out of breath, some PA from Paramount, like, oh, thank God I found you. You know, Sly was gonna kill me. I met Stallone at uh, Paramount, and he said, yeah, I saw your pictures, you know, you look good. And, and I told him I was a fighter and all this. And then he showed me all of these binders of, you know, eight by tens of other guys. There were like 5,000 guys up for the role. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll never get it. But Lundgren became a finalist and made it back for a screen test where he experienced the full force of the Rocky machine. There was about 50 people behind camera. You could kind of hardly see him back there. It was Sly, his bodyguards, and a bunch of guys in suits. And, and I was there, you know, knowing that, okay, <laughs> this is it. I did my monologue. You know, I decided to play the guy very kind of cold and, and collect it, not to move too much, just to kind of play the interior like a Soviet officer, because, you know, it has that stance with the high chin and everything. Two days later, Sly called me in New York. He got the role. With the villain cast, production began on the fourth Rocky movie. Where the original was low budget and no frills, this one was a full-blown extravaganza. Four was as much fun as you could possibly have as an actor. Apollo is set to fight the Russian machine, and the buildup is pure Las Vegas. Glittering lights and dazzling costumes, showgirls and tuxedos. That was so insane. And I had so much fun with all that. And I'm down on the platform, and I rise up into the light, because it's kind of metaphorical for me of getting introduced to Hollywood. And, and also, I can see my face there when I see myself, 27-year-old kid, actually reacting to being in this casino in Vegas. And Stallone, you know, Carl Weathers, James Brown, they're all in there. And I think the look of my face is, is priceless, because it's real. And there's no acting there. It's just a Swedish kid becoming a movie star. The pageantry of the fight between Apollo and Drago was dramatic, but it was the fatal ending no one saw coming. Insisting his friend Rocky doesn't stop the match, Apollo is killed in the ring. It's not just a matter of him dying, it's a matter of a person who is so proud and unable to acknowledge his own limitations that he would put himself in a literally life-threatening situation in order to hopefully prove that he is still as good as he ever was. thought, well, when Apollo goes down, number one, I don't want to catch myself because that gives it away. And then I was doing this little twitching, you know, as I went down, and the doctor really thought I'd gotten taken out. He comes up running to me and... Are you okay? Are you, did you, are you all right? Yeah, man. I know. He saw the twitching and he thought I'd been tagged, man. 
worked. So it worked. It worked. If he dies, he dies. Ivan Drago wasn't uh, exactly known for his verbal abilities in a movie, but he could fight. To avenge his friend's death, the all-American Rocky comes out of retirement and travels to Russia for an unsanctioned bout with Drago. The fact that it, it had the whole Soviet thing going on, it, the stakes were higher, and your patriotism was tested and so forth. Rocky IV makes a pretty interesting social statement about sort of the relationship between the USA and Russia at that time, which I think it very consciously was trying to make. Stallone also set out to take the film to a new level of boxing authenticity, even if it meant enduring a particularly brutal training and fighting regimen. I trained harder probably for that than I trained for the others because Dolph is so damn much bigger. I trained with Stallone for five months. We trained twice a day, uh, six days a week, weights in the morning and boxing in the afternoon. Usually I'd end up getting the worst of it. A lot of that happened in the training, during the training montages, running up those hills, slipping on the rocks. A couple times we almost took falls that I thought could have been fatal. I was surprised that Stallone, who was 10 years older than me at the time, who still is, but he was, he was about 35 and I was 25, that he actually was able to do that. Because, you know, for a 25-year-old fighter, 35 was like, forget it, you're over. You know, my, in my world, you were, by 30, it's over. So I was impressed by him, I remember. To make the boxing as realistic as possible, Stallone decided to film the first part of their fight with real sparring. Taking the storyline a little too close to reality, Dolph Lundgren delivered a near fatal blow to his director. That was the most hellacious. <sighs> that was brutal, let me tell you. Those shots. He would tell me to hit him harder or, you know, more body shots, you know. Dolph hit him so hard he moved his heart. I ended up in the hospital for five days. He hit me so hard in the heart that it was uh, my, it was called a periocardial sac that was starting to swell around my heart. And Dolph's an incredibly powerful guy, believe me, and, and powerful, it was just devastating. So next thing I know, I'm on a low altitude flight to St. John's Hospital and put on an intensive care. He was a tough guy, but maybe I did hit him too hard, I don't know. But Stallone and Rocky would both survive and soldier on. Everybody should change. Ask him what it is, Melissa. Lundgren felt his character change in that pivotal moment as well. On the Frankenstein myth, the monster turns on his creator. Sly had that in the script. He's kind of been used by the system and that he's feeling a bit bad about some of the things they make him do. And when he does turn on his creators, it comes from, from his inner pain of being manhandled and being brought up to be this perfect specimen. The message and the lavish production values won fans over and made Rocky IV the most successful film in the series. Stallone did a great job as a director. The fight scenes are very, very good, even when you look at him today. It's like he was at the top of his game. Rocky IV would pull in $300 million worldwide, making it, at the time, the highest grossing sports film ever made. With so much money on the line, it wasn't long before Rocky V was looming on the horizon. It seemed this franchise could do no wrong, but Rocky was about to meet its match. It was gonna end. Rocky dies. He takes his beating from Tommy Gunn, and he's gone. 